So you're recording? Yep. This episode of Talkback Tech is brought to you by Audible.com. To get your free audiobook with a free 14-day trial, go to audibletrial.com slash tbt. Over 85,000 titles to choose from for your PC or portable media device. Good evening, boys, girls, Muppets, whoever happens to be listening. Welcome to episode 34 of Talk Back Tech, recorded on Tuesday the 19th of July. Uh, Talk Back Tech is a show we use, use, <laughs> you guys, the listeners decide what we talk about. We do this live Tuesday nights from, well, you know, Tuesday nights, from 7-ish, 8, whatever, at live.thesecrethub.com. Uh, you guys can be part of the show. You can email me on tbtthesecrethub.com. You can Skype me on ATHCoin. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Tomkinson, M R T O M K O N S O N, or Aussie TBT, either of them. Uh, you can visit the TBT homepage um, at talkbacktech.com. Uh, you can post questions, there's wikis, forums, I don't know, all sorts of show notes, what well, they will be when I eventually get it finished. And all the podcast RSS feeds there is available there. Um, or you can search iTunes or the Listen app on Android for TBT or Talkback Tech. And also the uh, Talkback Tech uh, Facebook page is up as well. I'm your host, Will, and uh, as you know, the old codger Glenn, who's going away soon. And uh, our new, seemingly still around ho- co host, Michael. How are you going? Yeah, good. How's yourself? Yeah, not too bad, you know, considering. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a bit of a, a thrown together show tonight. But that's no different, I suppose. <laughs> I like How you going, Frosty? Yeah, good. You're looking, you're looking a bit cool down there. <laughs> Actually, feeling cool nice and warm near the heater. Near the heater, yeah. I got the heater on under the under the desk there to keep me feet nice and warm. What's <laughs> <laughs> on that cold wheel? Which I just no, no. But yeah, you do a show from outside and let's see who <laughs> if it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just to. Let you guys know, still looking for another co-host or so, or two, or three, or five. I'm not fast. Um, if you want to, if you're interested, give us a hoy, uh, either Twitter or email. Um, we can catch up. You know, see what you want to do. Um, it's not hard. Ask Frosty; he'll tell you. Ask Glenn; he's been doing it for years and still hasn't figured it out. No, I don't got no idea. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, so yeah. It, years I'll, and years, Will. How long? You, so what did you do? Episode thirty-four. Thirty-four. That's all right. That's um. I was up. just trying to. I was actually doing a bit of a a quick calculation when I said that because I think I've had about six or eight weeks off when I got sick. So oh, yes, we've yep. got to be getting close. I'll have to go back and have a look and see when the first show was done. Back through the archives. Yeah, we've got to be got to be coming up on our twelve month show. Hmm. Mm. So uh, next next show is my last show for those that, that can't wait. Oh, that's right, it is too. <laughs> Only got one You're more going. week. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Frosty, pick up your game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot that you're uh, you're leaving us. You're you're getting out of Tuesday nights. I am moving on. To um, other projects. Thursday night. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that one as well. <laughs> I just, yeah, no, I've just, I've just got a couple of other things in my, in my brain, and yeah, just trying to work some time out and, and do all that. And Will's been going for 34 shows, plus give or take <laughs> a few that probably didn't make it to the internet. Yeah, <laughs> and, there's been um, a couple yeah. that, that went a well. 34 but. shows. So we'll, we'll call it. We'll call the show mature. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, really, if you include Aussie Tech Head, you know, I've done not close on, what did I join? 199, I think, was my joining episode oh, there. I was, I was sitting around thinking about that the other day when 
how long have you been on there for? Because I was thinking, oh, how long since Mark been on? Yeah, because I don't keep those sort of stats. And I'm thinking, oh, I might have to go back and, yeah, listen, maybe listen to one one a, a week or something, you know, or maybe a few more just to, yeah, just just get some outtakes or something from different shows. Well, not outtakes, but just some grabs. See how we go. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking because I did the 200th show intro um, and I think I'd only done one or two before that. So, yeah. And what are you up to on that now? Two two forty-eight. Eight. So, yeah. So, Only that's what close on, <laughs> close on 90 shows I've done in 12 months. So, that's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, so they're coming well. up, yeah, so I know, yeah, yeah, Aussie Tech Heads, they're coming up for six years in September. Yeah. Six or five, five years. For, uh, 2006. S- yeah, S- uh, five. <laughs> five. Yeah, so they're coming up for the sixth year. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yep, five. <laughs> it's not an Aussie math head. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll get my calculator out for those big sums. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Take my socks okay. off when it's not too cold. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's, it's surprising though. Like PA is just saying in the chat room, um, Pooh Lennox, um, don't forget to check out his YouTube um, channel as well. He does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, not YouTube, um, Ustream. Sorry. Um, but he's just saying that, you know, basically he needs to um, he he'd like to become at least a, a part-time co-host as well, you know. Um, but it's really surprising how long it actually takes. Like, it really sneaks up on you. You, you think, oh, it's only one night a week or two nights a week in, in Glenn and mine's case. But really, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, um, it takes... A, it's, it's a full, like, Thursday. It takes... You're probably looking at one to two hours of prep and then maybe... Yeah, well, then you do the show, which takes anywhere from one to one and a half hours, say, and then then after the show, yeah, I've got to update the web page, upload it, edit it, yeah. mix it down, upload it, yeah. So that's from from about, what, you started about seven and don't finish, we're probably about up past 11, so it's a fair night. Well, that's it, you know, and <clears throat> tonight's, you know, even my show's more laid back and relaxed, but still, you've still got a bit of prep, you know, you've got the setup, the stream, the getting everyone together, making sure it's work. the show itself only goes for an hour, but, you know, you've got <laughs> half an hour, bef- well, let's say an hour before that, plus the, you know, because I do the uh, low bandwidth streams as well, so I've got to encode my normal audio, encode the low, the low quality audio, go through, edit the audio, upload that, so I mean, <laughs> you mm. know, the video, yeah, so... It's, Not uh, much room for MasterChef on a Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> so, so that's, that's where why, you're going. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's all I'm hankering to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I need some MasterChef. <laughs> that's why the um, the co-hosts have it easy. <laughs> I'm sure, though, Glenn, you'll, you'll sort of admit to that, that it's much easier for you to turn up tonight than... Oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier. Hell yeah. You know, you turn yeah, up, do the show, and go. After, yeah, after the show, okay, <laughs> bye bye, <laughs> and, I, and I'm in on I'm in on doing other things by, oh, under five minutes. Yeah, that's it. You know, and after the show, yeah. I've got to hang around and watch Top Gear with the chat room. You know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on? Is it on while you're chatting, while you're mixing down? And no, stuff? I uh, borrow the feed. <clears throat> <laughs> right. <laughs> You just, just you, you've of, seen it the week before, and you just just talk about it all. Yeah, it's it's all pure ad lib. <laughs> mm. How's Stig? So, have, have they outed him yet? Is he still in there? They got a new Stig. Oh. They got they got the new Stig, still the old one, there. Ben Collins. Which he wrote every, he wrote a book, didn't he? Well, no, that was the Black Stig, the original one. Um, I can't think of his name, but he was originally a stunt driver, and then he. Wrote a book, so they fired him off yeah. a, off a Collins class. No, off a I don't know whatever class it was, aircraft aircraft carrier. Um, <laughs> and then this dig Ben um, was it Ben Collins? Yeah, um, I think so. He was basically just sick of sick of it because all the crap he was putting up with got in the way of his car racing that he that he does. Um, He's a rally driver. Yeah, I well, more, I mean, he does rally drive. He runs the two-liter um, 
the Toka series. <clears throat> um, you know, he's he was really busy on top of everything else that he had to do. So he just had enough of it. Basically said, I'm the Stig, I want out. So yeah, right. they've got a new guy. And I actually reckon the new guy is Tiff. I can't think of his last name, but he's on fifth gear. He's an ex-racing driver. And um, he's been friends with him for years. Actually, But you watch some of the lines he takes when you know it's him driving. And then you watch some of the lines he takes in the you know the Stig suit and is the only person that takes those lines so he may not be but I reckon it's Tiff so yeah I don't really watch the show too much <laughs> to be honest I just know about Ski, Stig Stig and he got kicked out or something yeah, for that's his German <laughs> brother isn't it <laughs> yeah just to Stig or not to Stig that is my Stig is that busy question um Let's see him <laughs> Also, PA's corrected me. His uh, thing is justin.tv slash poodleantics. I better make sure I get that right because um, he'll go crook at me otherwise. You never mess with a man with clippers. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. All righty. Now, Sir Glenn, have you... Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Someone's at last addressed me by my correct title. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. We tried to keep it hidden all these years. So, <laughs> Lord. I didn't see that go through the papers. <laughs> oh, it's unofficial. It's just to keep him happy. Actually, it's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Well, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. Oh, I'm yes. technically oh, a lord, no. but that's another story. No, no, I'm, I'm actually a lord, but that's a that's another oh, story. Well, yeah. Welcome, Chip. Welcome to the fold. I'm technically a lord. I own <laughs> land in Scotland. So. Oh, do you? Sure, it's like lord? one square foot, but because I own land, it makes me a lord. <laughs> Is that all it takes? Yep. How do you become a baron? Uh, you got to own property. Like, oh, and that's... Not, just, not just land. You've got to actually own, like, a castle and stuff. I thought you had to have oh. a red plane. <laughs> no, that's only if you're Snoopy. Oh. <laughs> and you got to be red. Or you're trying to chase a pigeon. <laughs> and well, so, well, tell me how. Actually, let, let's let's dig down deeper here, Will. Let's, Lord Will, let's dig down deeper. How <laughs> did you come about owning a square foot of land in Scotland? Do you really have to ask? You got to know what the answer is before I even say it. <laughs> eBay. Um, yep. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no. So what? eBay. So how much? Um, it was a hundred and oh, I'm trying to look it up, see if it's still around. Um, it's a hundred and something dollars, I think. Um, so is it fair income, or is it just a, yeah? Just a bit of... No, you actually get given a deed. Um, it's from the the um, tribunal, the land department and land and resources, whatever it is. You actually get given a, a title to your land. Um, right. You get given this whole right. list of conditions stating that you're actually permitted to camp on your, you know, y you can camp in the area, but because it's such a small block of land, as long as one of your, one of your stakes, as they put it, so basically one of your tent pegs is in that block of land, you can camp there for mm. free, which also entitles you to hunt and to fish um, because you're yeah. a landowner. Um, it comes with Have paperwork. It comes with um, all this stuff it's really neat um have you ever set foot on your land hey have you ever set foot on your land well no but because they give you the gps coordinates i've had a look on google earth so i know exactly where it is <laughs> and i'm actually just up the hill from loch ness oh nice <laughs> just I know, it's, GPS it sounds is pretty accurate yeah, yeah it oh, is crazy. you get given a G gps coordinate of the four corners of the block um, yeah, right. Because it's really hard to figure out a, <laughs> a one square <laughs> foot block, but um, I'm just trying to find it, and I just, I'm just, I can't at the moment. Um, so, if you own a block, of, if you own any land in Australia, what are you called? Nothing. Oh, uh, a taxpayer. <laughs> Rates payer. I don't know. <laughs> a capitalist pig. A squatter. Here we go. <laughs> 
Um, no, you don't need any land for that. <laughs> Scottish lord or lady of... Oh, this is a Glenmore title. It's similar to... That's next door to the one I've got. Um, we're offering a unique opportunity to own one square foot of beautiful Scottish island of Sandy. Scottish law and custom allows landowners to use the title lord or lady regardless of the size of land they own. So by purchasing a small part of the Glenmore estate, owners will have the right to use the land that will use the title of lord or lady of Glenmore. Because the land is being sold in small parcels, it can be never be built on or developed. So in addition to gaining a, a lordship, you'll be helping preserve the land in its natural state for future generations. The documents have been drawn up by Scottish lawyers to ensure they are fully legal and come in a beautiful glossy display folder which both protects documents and provides a great way to present the documents as a gift. Um, so, do you have to pay rates? No. Nah. Why not? Who pays the rate? Because it's under... the. The people you buy this off, um, because they sell all the blocks, and that goes to the maintenance of the rates and things like that. Although they don't really have land tax in the same way we do, anyway. Oh right. Um, right. You get a letter of introduction. You get a plastic ID card with a signature strip issued by the Kingsdale Highland Estates with your individual plot number, um, with and a record as a record of your purchase. An ordnance survey map of the site identifying the location. A full color A4 land title deed suitable for framing, a coloured map with points of interest, an A4 size print giving historical background information, an A4 detailed print of your pot location with additional tourist information about the island. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fantastical. It's brilliant. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to have to look. Is that on eBay? Yeah, just type in um, Scottish Lord title. Mm. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um. And you go through and read all the questions that says, well, I need to pay any additional costs. There'll be no additional taxes. Um, the only cost is the initial purchase price. Um, you can make the, the names out to whoever you want. So you could gift them. You know, you could buy a block for somebody else and give it to them as a gift. Um, yeah, right. You know, the Scottish General oh, Register of... Or well, the Land Register... Um, has been quoted as saying, under the terms of land registration 1979, it is quite clear that land which is regarded as a souvenir plot is not acceptable for registration on the land register. And because it's not on the land register, means you haven't got to pay the taxes right. because it's a souvenir right. plot. Right. Well, there you go. That's so, on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Lord Will. Lord so Tomkinson. Cool. But yeah, it, it says, you know, that you can camp on it, you so, can yeah. fish, you can go to the hunting club, you can be part of the, the hunting lodge. That's a small you can be... tent. <laughs> well, that is. Have so, you ever, ever used your title for ill-gotten gain? You know how hard it is to find any forms at all that use Lord as the... <laughs> 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 because I've tried. Oh. Uh, every form I fill out. I've got the. I've actually got to find my pack. I don't know. I haven't found it since I moved. But every bit of document I have, none of them ever have Lord on them. <laughs> Does you it could, have you other? Could, you know, you could go. You, you could go other. to the um, down to the bank or something and say, "Listen, I wish to change my salutation." They say, "What are you?" You go, "Lord." Well, I want to do it on the driver's license. I reckon once you do it on the driver's license, you're set. That would be a bit harder. <laughs> But the bank could probably send you statements out, Lord. Yeah, probably. Lord Tomkinson. Yeah. Yeah, they'd probably do that. Once you start, you get your bank statements, then you start getting a few other things, and then go to your, get your driver's license and say, look, bank statements, passport, all this, I'm all Lord. See, I don't know how we can see that. But that's the um, that's the, the deed title and your block of land Gift and everything. So there's your GPS coordinates. Waterfront, Will. I mean, Lord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's pretty cool. you got to admit. <laughs> yes, my Lord. <laughs> so. Oh, look out. He'll be in the bloody parliament next. <laughs> with his two centimetre block of dirt. Hey, at least I've got one. <laughs> oh, that's right. I haven't. <laughs> I bet Frosty hasn't either. 
See? <laughs> I got a block of land in Scotland. How many people can say that? <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Not, not like her. Like her. Uh, you have to pee um, out on some haggis. <laughs> Take some haggis to the driving, to the RTA. They go, of course I'm a, of course I'm a lord. And start hunting. Well, you get given a, a um, you get given a, oh, a tartan. You get the traditional tartan of the land. I mean, it's only a um, little like Patch. thing you wear in your pocket, but you get given that area's tartan. <laughs> One inch square. Yeah, right. So that's funny. That's good, Will. That's funny. Even if it is, um, you know, even if it's only a, a, you know, a scam that they're making, you know, fifty bucks a person off. Still, that's pretty cool. The amount of work they yeah. go to, I mean, and they've been doing it for years. It's not like it's a fly by night thing. I mean, I got mine mm. three or four years ago, and a friend of mine got his at the same time, and it's still the same company doing it now. So, you know, it's obviously I not. You could get together with all the other players, like all the other um, land holders, and said, "Okay, let's pool our land. Yeah. And we might be able to, you know, and we we might be able, to, <laughs> we might be able to pitch a, um, pitch a tent on here." <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. You know, or you buy buy, you know, fifty blocks, and you got yourself, mm. you know, a hundred square foot of land or something. Maybe I reckon how, how I wonder how you'd go if you said, okay, well, you bought say fifty blocks, and you'd say, well, now I want to really make a claim. I want to fence it. <laughs> no, because it's um, woodland area. You're not right. allowed to develop on it, which means you couldn't fence on it either. Oh, right. Um, Frosty, are you still there? Yeah, I am. Can you start restart your camera, please? I don't know how. <laughs> how about I call you back? <laughs> um, I'm gonna call you back. But yeah, so but what I was um, getting to, um, the, what started that whole conversation? <laughs> um, I have no idea. Oh yeah. Did you get around to rooting your Android? No, I didn't. You didn't. You slacked. No, I don't get. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't get time to do anything. I, look, I, I, I looked at it the other day and I thought, look, he's still working just as a phone. That's all I need at the moment. So I haven't done that. I um. I, will. I did mine on the weekend. I put the latest clear, clean Android on there. Um. I'll have this stupid... How do, how do the cameras work? Um, <laughs> it. I'll do it this way. It's easier. I'll show you. Um, but I didn't videotape it or anything yet because I um, basically did it over the weekend on and off when I had time. So it's sort of a bit too patchy. But now that I know how simple it is to do I will uh, I will definitely um, do a video on it mm. yeah that'd be um, interesting I'll have a look at that give me some support when I finally get around to doing mine yeah. I'm just worried that, that I, oh, I've got no problems with probably putting the, uh, the software on it and all that I'm just worried that it's just not going to work like it's not going to hook up to Virgin or you know, I won't have some code or something no, well, it worked straight out of the box. I didn't have any problems. Um, so it just, just goes around, finds the your provider, and just sort of sets itself. Is that what it does? Um, yeah, basically. Like, if you look up the top of mine, you can see... Well, you can't because I don't get signal here. But you can see the, um, the bars up there. Um, if I go to my settings... Um, and I go down to about phone. Mm. Um, you'll actually see Android two point three point four. This is just the clean, the clean model. Um, I haven't got any particular breed of type on there. Um, so, ha- so, so just a quick question: how, how did you, how did you get the screen up on the Skype? Ah, see, that's one of the joys of rooting it. I now have a program which is actually was going to be my my screen pick my um, android pick see network tells from network oh yes yep um and this program is called mobile desktop 
so it's, you know hard well actually i think it's called web desktop and mm. what it does is <coughs> it um allows you once your phone's it works on a on a um hang on what have i done i've done something my screen's gone hang on let me get my screen back <laughs> um it works on a non-rooted phone as well but there's a lot of things you can't do but once you root your phone, it allows you to do things like send text messages and emails um, oh, yeah. straight from the the desktop um, right, without right. the Whoops, oh, I did it again. I keep grabbing the wrong. So is that connect like wirelessly? Um, yeah, it just uses a, a. You know how I had a IP camera. Um, yes a while back and it just used a internal well I'll show you if I go back to the screen capture and we'll load up the um, web desktop service and you can actually see on here that if I press the start server button it'll work better <laughs> um, oh, hang on what have I done I've done something stop doing things <laughs> So anyway, uh, Frosty, I hear Frosty's into Torchwood. He's um, he keeps tweeting how much he loves it. He started it. You started at <laughs> season one, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, and uh, uh, you'd never seen it before. You've talked about it life. so much. Yeah, <laughs> and you like it. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching it on the boxy. Oh, nice. So um, so so when you you click on share and it just sends a tweet out and a and a Facebook because yeah. you can link your Facebook and Twitter to it. So yes, it just yeah. sends so out a tweet. Are you watching? And says, are you watching the new theories as well? Ah, uh, no, I'm going to save that for last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. But yeah, no, no it's good. Watch, so you, you yeah. like the the Cyber Woman one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. So what are you up to? <laughs> you up to about six, uh, episode eight? Um, nine, I think. Oh, yeah. I think there might be 12 or 13 in a series. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 13 yeah, I in the think, first two. I'm thinking back. I like the first series. I think the second one could have been better. I like the second series. Yep. Um, the third series, oh, it was very powerful. Didn't like There's the ending, like but it was very five powerful. five episodes or something, isn't it? Uh, only four, yeah. When I say I didn't yeah. like the ending... It's not because it was pus. It was that good that I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you what it was all about, but uh, look, it's just great. It was great. It's not a Hollywood ending. But um, yeah, new season is going good. So um, so oh, do you watch the I, do you watch Doctor Who as well to to get your fix as well? No, I don't watch Doctor Who. Well, see, that's another one you're gonna have to start watching, isn't it? <laughs> well, that goes back to like sixty something. We don't have to go back that far. We start from <laughs> 2005, when you know when it, when the production standards got uh, increased. But I hear just on the while we're waiting for Will, we'll just interrupt whenever you're ready to come back. So good. I'm listening and learning. I haven't watched Torchwood yet. Oh, get into it. Get, do yourself a favour. You won't watch nothing else. But the <laughs> uh, Sci-Fi Channel Trust is starting a, the re reruns of Doctor Who from Tom Baker. I think in August. Okay. Starts. Ah, the best doctor. Yeah. So yeah, that's all right. It's it's good <laughs> to see it. the, that wasn't the, response, the doctor getting wasn't. around. <laughs> hey. So that wasn't the response. It's supposed to be a big debate on what the best doctor is. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I I agree. Like, um, yeah, that's who I grew up with. So, look, you gotta you gotta you gotta split the series into two: the classic series and the new series. Um, I, I think it's, it's too hard to to come up with your favourite overall. I think, like in the classic series, you'd have to be leaning to. Uh, mine's a bit of a toss up between John Pertwee, Tom Baker. I'd have to probably rest with Tom Baker. Like his first couple of seasons were just great, you know, just absolutely outstanding. Uh, sort of waned towards the end a bit there, but um, at the start, great. You know, like you got classics like Pyramids of Mars, Genesis of the Daleks, Terror of the Zygons. Revenge of the Cybermen, Ark in Space, Talons of Wang Chiang. Oh, they're all good. I could sit down and watch them all now. 
<laughs> oh, D. That's sad. Oh, right. There That's it. Right. The show's finished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Glenn's got to go. See you all later. <laughs> I should start a Doctor Who podcast. <laughs> you should. I'm actually <laughs> surprised you haven't. Oh, who's going to talk to hey, about it? <laughs> the, best, the secret to finding a, a or to having a successful podcast is to find a niche that's very passionate about what they do. You find mm. between Doctor Who and Star Trek, you find me a more popular niche market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know, I, I don't know. No, no, it's all right. I, I enjoy doing the, the Aussie tech heads and that, but um, but yeah, also, I oh, just, I just, I just, I know a lot about Doctor Who because I've watched it since I was a little boy. Yeah, it helps. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so how are you going with your with your Windows desktop Android thingy? <laughs> yeah, well, as I was saying, um, it's the actual program itself is basically sets up a, a internal um, web server in the phone. So as you can see, you just put in your um, uh, well, it uses the internal IP address of the phone slash whatever service port you want. You hit start and. Um, you can go from there and you can do, you know, you can go to um, set up an FTP server if you want or you can go in and, you know, manage all your applications. Um, you can use, oops, you can use it as a, a webcam um, if you want to do that. Um, so you can, oh, upside down webcam. Um, so you can see what's going on with that um, you can use um, normal f file explorer so you can watch you know move files to and from it or load things or update yep. things or whatever you want to do um, you can as I said do your messaging and emails you can add things to clipboard so if you've got a web page or something you want to copy text across to and from you can do it there one of the cool things is a Wi-Fi keyboard so you can set your phone up on a dock so it's sitting in front of you and then you just use the Wi-Fi keyboard app and use the normal keyboard and mouse on the um, oh, on the PC. Nice. Um, the one thing I'm waiting for them to do is to implement the remote control so you can fully yeah. control the phone, the screen and everything from the desktop. So it's a free app. They do do a paid one which is basically more of a donation because it doesn't actually do anything the free one doesn't do but it's a couple of bucks it's worth getting um, as I said it's called web desktop there are a few different ones I like this one it, it works for me um, it's quick seems to be fairly reliable yeah it looks um, pretty good looks good you know? so it's um, it's pretty neat what you can do and once you once you root your phone see I've got other apps on here um I'll go back to this for a sec. If I go back to <laughs> uh, my desktop, there's there's apps on here. Uh, just got to find it now. I'll come back to that in a sec when I find it. But there's apps like overclocking apps. Um, so when, like you, that. when you do this to your phone, like is that is it a does generally does your phone seem to be more responsive i guess that's oh the whole absolutely reason. see it depends on what you put on it see if you fill it full of crap then like if you use a particular um hang on i'll show you this quickly before i forget <laughs> oh, this, oops make my screen cap bigger <laughs> um see this 998 here that's actually a cpu overclocking application so i can yep. actually go and tell it what i want my cpu to run at when i want it to run at um you know lots of things like that right so right. there's there's apps like that that you can't do normally um that you can do with it now basically as i said the other week root is basically rooting your phone is a glorified term for giving yourself administration privileges um so there's two ways of doing it. There's just rooting the phone, which will open up a few different features and options that you don't normally have. And then there's um, and then there's actually 
doing what I've done and changing the firmware on the phone. I've gone from what is normally the HTC Sense is basically what they call their version of Android. What are you doing? <laughs> well, well, so that wasn't coming out on the on the show. <laughs> that wasn't coming out, and now it's come out. That's right. What? See, I like it when you I'm come out. Play- <laughs> I'm only playing with my camera. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I say more. <laughs> oh no, he's been You're assimilated. Right back. <laughs> Um, keep going. <laughs> and yeah, Glenn is the entire reason this show sucks, people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's going to be incredibly boring without him. Um, keep going. Yeah, so <clears throat> you can do what I've done, which is actually change the firmware. I've gone back to a plain vanilla, no frills, as Google intended, Android. You know, two point. 4.3 I think I figured out or 3.4 however it is um, and it's the, the obviously no it's not bloated it's got no extra stuff in there it's the fastest vanilla Android you can get um, right. oh. so if you want speed that's what you put on and yes. any th- other functionality you need you add through apps now mm. Lots of other people do their own flavors, like um, Cyanogen is one of the biggest um, names when it comes to modded firmwares. And the reason for that is because they do such a good job. They include a lot of stuff that virtually everybody needs. It always looks good. They're glossy. They're, you know, they're, they're a really good interface. Um, but once again, obviously, you're paying a little bit of speed sacrifice and size sacrifice. See, I gained 150 meg when I went back to the plain vanilla Android in this space. Yeah, yeah. In my internal, in my internal drive, like the mm. firmware drive, which is an extra so 150 that, worth of apps and stuff I can put on. So that CPU app that you're talking about before. Uh, are you saying that that won't work on a non-rooted phone? No, because it'll work on a... Like, you haven't got to change your firmware, but at the very least, you do have to change your root privileges because you need to access certain parts of the firmware that you can't do it, that Google won't normally let you do. And um, so... And can you auto-update it once it's on? What's that? Well, I can just plug it in and go, oh, there's an update to Cyanogen. Do you want to download it? Depending on what sort of update it is. But even to do a... Um, okay, well, I'll show you. Basically, actually, I'll show you. Instead of trying to explain it, I'll go to me because I'm here. Now, I'll restart my phone. So we all know how to do that. Clearly, I don't, but everybody else knows how to do that. So we'll power it off, and then we'll just wait a sec for it to power off. And actually, one option it added to the menu was reboot, which I never had. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the down arrow or the volume down key um, and power it on for about 10 seconds. And what that will do, and this will work on any phone, and it will bring up a boot screen, which you probably can't really see on there, but it'll bring up a boot screen. And that is your bootloader. So that's like a BIOS in a normal PC. Oh, um, and from here, I can say, so I'm just stuck in a boot loop. Something's gone screwy in the cache. Well, from this point yeah. here, I can go into the menu and then I can go um, reset cache, uh, reset memory, things like that. So I can just do a, a basically. Then I can also do a hardware master reset, and then, but I can also do things like. Um, and I'll go back. If I go back to the boot menu, let's 
let's see, bootloader. Then I can actually go to recovery. Just waiting for it to check the card. And now once I go to recovery, I acknowledge that, it'll boot it back into a, another menu. Yeah. And then um, once that loads up into the other menu, it's pretty simple from there because then it just says, oh, there we go. It just comes up with another, with a, a secondary boot menu. Okay. It's like the safe mode menu in Windows. And it says, do I yeah. want to reboot? Do I want to re reboot to the last configuration? Do I want to wipe the data? Do a factory reset? Or do I want to install zip from SD card? So I'll go to install. Now, you actually, this menu is what is the start of the routing process because this is actually called the Clockwork Mod Recovery Boot Menu, um, which is a simple app that you can actually just install the app and the app will install this menu. So that part's easy to do. And then once you go install from um, SD card, you quite literally just choose what app or what zip file that you've choose, chosen, whether it's Cyanogen or whether it's Android or whatever the particular flavor is you've chosen, um, you quite simply just put the zip file under, the, under there and select it and then press install and it will literally just run through an install process fully unattended once you're at that point. Obviously, make sure you've got your battery <coughs> um, charged. And once you're at that point, you just um, wait for it to do its thing, and then it'll reboot once or twice. So it's not it's not a hard thing to do. No, the hardest part is figuring out. Like there are a few things you need to look. Like the first time I put the Cyanogen mod on, it failed. I don't know why. It just did. You know. So what time frame? What time frame? How much time have I got to set myself aside? Um. Well, I can now that I've got that the orange boot clockwork orange orange clockwork boot or whatever it's called installed yep um that was the hardest part because you had to put the app on the phone and on the computer and um do a couple of bits and pieces that took me a little bit to figure out because i couldn't figure out why it wasn't doing a couple of things it's supposed to be doing but once mm. i did that um the actual install of the um, Android took, I don't know, 20 minutes. Oh, that's not too so bad. That's not bad. Once you get it to the point where you're ready to go, it's literally a yes. you know, 20-minute, half-hour thing. And now, because I've got it set up so easily with, with the mods installed to or installed from zip file, I can choose any flavor of Android I want, hit install, and install it in 10 minutes. So now it's a 10-minute job. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. That's what I... Yeah, look, I'll get around to it one day. One of these days, I'll do it. Because, yeah, um, as I say, like, mine gets a bit bit laggy. You know, you hit the camera. But what I was doing, I was trying to log into Foursquare the other day. I don't know if anyone else has these problems, but you hit the button. And I was, I was leaving work, so I hit the button. And then I think I was, like, home <laughs> before it worked. And I don't know what the hell the thing does, eh? I don't know. It just goes off and... Re um, it refreshes the emails or something. I don't know what the hell it does. It uh, oh, it's annoying sometimes. Very, very annoying. I don't think it's a problem. It's definitely something's not quite right with your phone, eh? Yeah. Look, I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna reset it. Oh, I'm gonna do that. that. I'm gonna do what you said. And um, it's just that model of phone, isn't it? They were, they weren't the greatest success. Um. They were a little bit flaky, but they were the first of that form factor phone, the, you know, that particular design. Um, but, you know, one, but any phones like that, I mean, really, you find a, you find me a phone that doesn't play up occasionally, you know. <laughs> mm, like, do. my boss, no, that's a lot of crap. My boss's iPhone resets itself at least twice a day, assuming it works. And that's fairly new. And they mm. took it back. Yeah. They had it for six weeks. Gave him some old iPhone. Um, gave it back to him. And 
it did exactly the same thing. So, you know. Well, guys, I suppose anything's vulnerable, isn't it? Anything with a chip inside, it's vulnerable. That's it. So, well, seeing as we got, I was going to actually do this before um, we started talking about the phone, but we, <laughs> I forgot. So I'm going to do it now. So, for all of those playing along at home, here's an ad. <laughs> hey, have you heard of Audible.com? Audible? Is that where you get audiobooks read to you? Not just read. Over 85,000 audiobooks for your listening pleasure. Performed by some of the best voice actors in the world. Sounds great. But where can I get it? Well, if you go to audibletrial.com slash tbt, you will get a 14-day trial and a book for free. A free book? Sounds great. But will it work on my device? Absolutely. It works on almost all audio devices. MP3 players, car stereos, GPS units, phones, just about anything. Cool. Where did you say I could go to get a free book? Audibletrial.com slash TBT. Sign up for a free 14-day trial. Cancel any time and still keep the book. W-W-W-dot-A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T- R I A L dot C O M forward slash T B T. I'm so there. All righty. That's uh, <laughs> actually the reason I'm still. I'm using. I know I have another ad, but I'm using that one because I can't find the other one. <laughs> I'm going to have to re download it back off. Um, <laughs> Off uh, YouTube again because I can't remember what I did with it. But um, anyway, as we're talking about BBC, BBC, well, Doctor Who before, I thought an appropriate book will be Doctor Who at the BBC, The Tenth Doctor. Um, Now, I haven't heard any more than um, like the last or the first 10 minutes of it because I only sort of found it during the ad. Shh. Actually, that's not entirely true. I found it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Doctor Who and I forgot about it. But basically what it is, um, Elizabeth Sladen presents a fascinating collection of interviews, behind the scenes, set reports and humorous sketches from the BBC radio and television, all centred around the series featuring David Tennant as the good doctor. Um, so I'll play a bit for you. And I don't know what we're going to get. We'll probably get the intro again. Let's see how we go. Weeks of rumours and gossip about who will fill Billy Piper's time-travelling shoes in Doctor Who. We finally got confirmation. Newcomer Freema Argument's got the job. It's only something in my eye. Please, please let me look. I happen to be the Doctor. that I, I'm saying I'm I'm going to use the family the family link yeah right? and I'm going to ask you if I can have a part in your in your next series <laughs> then indeed the doctor sexuality gets gets uh, gently explored in the second series as well how, how fascinating go on go on how what is he he doesn't come out does he I can't possibly <laughs> reveal what happens <laughs> Hello, and welcome aboard for another journey along the time-space corridor of BBC Broadcasting. Previous. So there you go. Oh, good stuff, <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, so oh, that, that might be worth a listen, you know. It's, it's not until someone dies you want to hear more from them. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, Paul is, she passed away earlier this year. So I might... Um, oh, that's might, right, might yeah. Save yeah. up and get that. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean... <clears throat> if you use the, the code, um, what's my code? Audibletrial.com slash TBT. Um, you'll get one free credit, which you could use on this book or any number of 85,000 books to choose from. Um, and let's say you do use your credit, you, you continue to continue with your uh, sign-up, you get one credit a month for, for free as part of your uh, 
your continual support to them. Um, well, it's not free. I mean, obviously, you've got to pay for a subscription, but it works out cheaper mm. than buying the books generally. Um, or you can always upgrade to the, the Platinum, I think it is, where you get two books. But let's say you used your one book on Cryptonomicron, for example, which is, you know, 54 hours or something. Still only one credit. You know, you can use that. And then if something like this mm. comes up and you choose and you've only got one credit, well, you can you can purchase more credits or you can um, buy this book separately for, you know, $12, $13, whatever it is. And, um, yeah. you know, have it, add it to your collection and you always get to keep it. And uh, even if you cancel your trial, so audible.com slash TBT, you get your free 14-day trial and one free book and you can keep it even if you leave. But once you've got it, you'll stay. I know you will. They've got a really groovy <laughs> Android app. They've got a good uh, um, iPhone, iPad app, so you can listen to it wherever you go. Yeah. And they yeah. sync across platforms. So if you listen to it on your PC and your Android, for example, then you might get halfway through it on one device, you load it up on the other one, and it starts off from where you were. So, yeah, nice. So audible.com, audibletrial.com slash TBT. Do so, yourselves a favour. Or something, yeah. <laughs> all righty so that's our fun and games and frivolity done for let's be serious and you know <clears throat> whatever it is we do now the real question is do we actually have people who send us questions and the answer to that question is yes it does actually happen we don't always make things up however we don't always remember to load the email up in advance <laughs> oh no <laughs> okay. I think <clears throat> this is... Frosty had something that came up through the week. Yeah, I did. One of my yeah. friends had an iPhone, or yeah. just bought an iPhone, and um, he couldn't turn it on. So uh, I had to tell him that there's... It's like a, a secret re-sweat, uh, re- reset <laughs> where you... <laughs> a reset, a re-sweat yeah. sitch. <laughs> a re-sweat. <laughs> yeah, where you hold down the power button. And the home button, you got to hold them for 10 seconds and the phone should reboot. Right. So and that's what, like uh, an equivalent of a hard reset? Yeah, basically. Oh, okay, cool. Do you know much that. about the pods, Frosty? Oh, I had the same thing happen to me earlier this week on my iPad. Yeah. I've got an old Screen... one, like a, one of those nanos. Do you know much about those? No. No. Uh. No, no one does. <laughs> Not unless they're iPad nanos. I was going to say, it's an iPad nano. That's an iPhone 4, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 3GS. <laughs> um, is that the one with the screen? Oh, no. What's what's there to know? They Is that a shuffle? Oh, whatever this. Sorry, shuffle, yes, I'm, yeah. Because it says that the nano's that. got the screen on it, hasn't it? Sorry, yeah, yeah, my fault. My apologies. Yeah, I've got an old. I've got an old. Me. 16 gig <laughs> nano floating around. Yeah, it won't. Um, it won't connect to the computer. Computer doesn't recognise it. I thought it might have been a Windows problem, but I plugged into the Mac. It doesn't recognise it. You changed the cable. I can't be going to the Genius Bar. <laughs> Do you put another cable in it? Uh, no, because I've I, I, I only got one. I was going to say get like a one dollar cable off eBay and try that because I had the same thing actually. Plugged it in, nothing happened. It wouldn't charge. And also, if it's dead flat, it won't recognise it till it charges either. So sometimes you've got to leave it in for three or four hours before it'll recognise it. I did. I didn't have. I don't have the original lead for it. And I did buy one off eBay, uh, like for two dollars or whatever. But no good, unless that one's broken as well. But I don't know. It's not that important. Like, yeah, it's not that important. It's only a little shuffle, little shuffle dude. Yeah, I got a little nano kicking around somewhere. But um, mm. remember the old That's classics? Much. They had a like a laptop hard drive in them. <laughs> Wh- which ones? The old iPod classics. They had oh, the actual really? hard drive in them. Yeah. That was before my time. Way <laughs> before the time I got Apple products. The old scrolly wheely thing that made this really annoying clicking Click sound wheel. every time you did something. I love the fact that they actually had a speaker dedicated to making that click. There was an actual speaker yes. in the device that made that click. 
Yeah, right. I thought that was and you pretty could turn, sad. You could turn it on and off too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when you turned it off, it felt sad because you got that poor speaker, nothing to do, you know. That's <laughs> it. Um, I've got a email here from Maddie from the Central Coast. Um, hi, Will and Glenn. Uh, I must say that's before your time, Frosty, so don't feel bad, you know. Um, it's okay. It took them like thirty episodes to learn my name, so that's fine. <laughs> Hang around for another thirty, Frosty. <laughs> um, I must say the iPad Two is a great little unit. However, as you know, it has an issue with the Flash Player. Do you know of a workaround? This will be probably Glenn, the scene as you have one. Well, the I- iPad, I what? iPad so Two. He's got a- He's got a problem with the flash. Yeah. Well, don't do flash. That's what I'm. That's what I mean. <laughs> I know with Android, for example, the you can use the Skyfire browser for most of the the stuff to get around Flash. Um, no, no, no. no? Is there no? No, I don't think. As far as I know, you can't do it. No. Yeah, no. I hadn't. That, that browser is available on the iPad. Skyfire, and yeah. maybe Oprah may do it as well. Because um, what She's they actually do, Skyfire does the same thing. Is what they actually do is they'll take the web page, put it onto their servers, and then recon compile it back into something your device understands, and then send it to you. So HTML5. either HTML five or MP four or whatever particular flavor that it w- that works on it. Um, which is actually a good idea because there's two things. One is it saves you bandwidth because if you're so let's say you're playing a, a 1080 or a 720 video. Um, that's a lot of bandwidth you're using. So if you can convert that down to something that still looks good, you know, but it's in HTML5 or, or something like that, um, it's going to save yeah, you a lot look, of bandwidth. Look, there's little things here and there that don't don't show up properly on the iPad. But um, I don't know, say, so for example, Empire Avenue, you buy a share and there's a little slider that, that says how much you want to buy, you know, and you slide it. You know, slide it across for the amount of shares you want to buy. That don't work probably very good. So I don't know whether that's a bit of a flash little thing or whatever. But so um, but like you normally can get around the non-flash things if you can't. Well, you can't. You just have to do it on your desktop. Like Google Plus. No, that works okay. There's a mobile version of that, uh, and that's Plus. I've always <laughs> got to go back to the desktop version. But yeah, no iPad, no flash, no flash on any no any. Apple port Although I th- did I hear correctly that iOS five does flash? Or was oh, or did I not hear that right? I thought I don't think it does. Okay. Maybe it maybe I didn't hear that right. I thought of somebody was saying that, but maybe they're saying yep. it's it's got the yeah. option to support it, maybe. I remember them I reckon, mentioning something about it. I don't know. I wasn't listening. I reckon the head of Adobe and Jobsy went to the same school when they were kids, and the head of Adobe, when they were kids, pulled Jobsy's pants down in the middle yeah, of the classroom. I know. <laughs> I mean, I I understand. Not I understand why he doesn't use it, and that's because it's processor intensive, it's a memory hog, it's mm. buggy, and it's huge. I mean, I know why they don't use it. I mean, you can get it, but even on Android, you can get a stripped down version. Um, that works for ninety five percent of the things out there, and I mean, if you got you, you remember that Flash basically started off as a vectoring software. It was designed for drawing dots and lines in the right place. It was never designed as a wrapper for a video, so mm. that's part of the problem. And I mean, HTML five is a much more um, oh, pretty if you want you know it's a much more elegant solution to that because it is lightweight um, it doesn't add a lot of overhead to the video it can be configured much more you know broadly um, but because the world's used flash for the last well they've used it a lot for the last yeah. probably 10 years at least so it's sort of mm-hmm. become the de facto you know 
Um, but yeah, but but I don't know. I don't miss it. Like some things, I like I'll go and do something on the iPad, and it goes, and I know it's that bugs out because there's no flash, and I just go, well, okay, I'll move on. Mm. You know, it doesn't it doesn't annoy me too much. That's that's fine. I'll come home and use the thing. But like, but as far as say the iPad versus my, and I'm not going to blame Android, but I'll blame Samsung, the <laughs> Samsung Android. But, but a difference between my iPad and the phone, that Samsung phone, is that. The iPad, everything just is sweet as soon as you touch it. But the um, the phone, it's laggy. Um, yeah, it refreshes mail and and stuff. So like, so say you turn, you want to take a photo, you switch it on, you push camera, and then oh, hang on a sec, I'm going to refresh the mail. So after five minutes, it's refreshed the mail, then it gives you the camera. And, oh, little Johnny that just walked for the first time, I missed it. Can you do it again? But that's what I mean. See, it's definitely a problem with your phone because there's my camera, you know. And it uploaded the it uploaded in the process. So mm, Yeah, so I know. I'm just going to have to do the thing as we spoke about before. But that's, a, that's the thing. And, and that's part of the problem. Like... <clears throat> Well, apparently, now uh, disgruntled tech in the lounge saying that the Samsung has has got that problem, known issue, can't be fixed. Yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I got this phone mainly because it was had the gig gig processor in it, and I thought, okay, that's got a like these little apps. They're only 400k. You know, they're not how how you know, how how many apps can you have running at the same time? It stacks as a gig processor, but yeah. you can't. Well, you yeah. can. That's the thing. I mean, I can run. 20 or 30 apps back to back without a problem fixed. yeah um, well it can be fixed. yeah and that's the thing what happened with that particular phone was they pushed it out just to get the phone on the market and the problem is it really was pushed out a couple it was really only a couple of weeks early and part of the problem here in Australia is we're so damn slow getting updated devices or updated firmware Telstra announced they're going to update the firmware for um, the Desire. The problem is that they decided that they would update most of their other phones, but the, any of the HTC stuff wouldn't be included because the Sense part of it, which is what HTC, you know, you've got the Motorola Blur, HTC Desire, uh, Sense, they're different flavors of Android. Because the sense was going to be so tricky to rewrite, they didn't bother to include it in the update. So all the other Telstra phones at the time, like two weeks ago, got an update except for anything HTC. So, mm. um, yeah, because I, I looked at the HTC designs. That was one of the phones that I was looking at when I bought mine, and and I was pretty happy with the way that worked. And that what was that was a what was the processor before? Gig that's one gig. Twelve or something. No, that's one gig. What the desire? The well, it must have been another one. The desire might have been wildfire hey, or no, something like that, isn't no. it? No, there was the desire. Then there was another one. I think HTC had out at the time. I can't remember. Um, but it was. A, it wasn't a gig processor, and it seemed to be okay. And I thought, no, I'm going to go for the gig. It's the same, pretty much the same price. I'm going to go for the gig. And I thought. A phone is never going to need faster than that, but there you go. Well, but, now they've got the the twin core ones, you know. So yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so the lounge, the scrunnel team in the lounge, he's got a, he's got a fix. He's going to send me a fix. I'll let you know how that goes when I get when I get around to doing it. You know, but that's the thing. Like I noticed, my old um, Android, the Magic I had before this was a six hundred megahertz phone. And once I put, once I put the vanilla Android on that, when I was comparing mine to this in the shop, mine was quicker because of the overheads mm. that the the flashy. That's the difference. It's like in Windows Seven, you um, turn off all the special effects and menu thingies and this and that and everything else, and it's really quick. You turn all that stuff on and bogs it down. It's the same principle with everything. And speaking mm. of Windows. What's yeah. this <laughs> I hear about you installing Vista? <laughs> let it be known that, yes, I did. And let it be known that it is no more. <laughs> what 
a piece of pus. <laughs> like, I, I wanted to do one thing with Vista, one thing, <laughs> and I kept two copies of Vista on the shelf. But, geez, I want to get rid of them now. But I kept two <laughs> copies because I thought I'll need them for the media centre because I'm going to build a couple of more. I was going to build two media centres. So I pulled the Vista off the shelf, whipped it on. It's a core two duo you know 2.3 gigahertz something so so it took vista okay and like it was vista was running really smooth it was nice it was just cruisy it was you know i was loving it and so until i went to the media center and that's when like this is why microsoft just sucks dog poo because all i wanted to do all i wanted to do was was just use the media center right how how many how much different uh can the media center be for vista than to Windows 7. Well, it's a lot. For, for starters, it records in a different file format. So before I could read the, say, I've got the, my main media center, before I could read the files off the main media center on the Vista machine, I had to convert the files to the, the, a different format that the Vista could read. Windows 7 could read the same old format. So the media center, the Windows 7 records in a WTV format, the Vista records in a DVR um, MS format. So, so I downloaded this automatic thing that watched the folders, you know, would every time I recorded something would automatically change it from WTV into DVR MS. And so I thought that's going to be the, the saviour of the day. But no, <laughs> it still didn't work. It, that part of it did work. And then I think I tried to, um, oh, I just tried to do other things. It just was just a real poxy poxy pox pox it was a pox box that's what it was <laughs> a pox box so now i'm back to windows 7 i put another windows 7 on it and i'm uh, i'm gonna have to go and get a family pack or something because i need two so, I'm, gonna, so, so I'm back to windows 7 and everything's running sweet so you know who's you know somebody who's got two copies of, Exp of vista for sale <laughs> yes, and I'm meant to have a look on eBay to see how much they're going for, but look, I'll be lucky Not to get two dollars. Eleven cents. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, uh, look, it's not much. I know that because businesses aren't buying it, and people won't buy it because it's old. So it wouldn't surprise me. I could have a look. <laughs> look, if look, if you didn't want, if I didn't want it to use the media center, if I wanted just to use Windows, I, I, I it was good. It was it was great. It was, it was it was on this machine. It was fast. It was it was doing everything I wanted. I love. I liked it. It was smooth. But um, I tell you, like I just needed it for the media center. It didn't work for me. And why they bother changing the way they do things between the versions? I don't know. Like seriously, don't know. It was just everything was different. Everything was just go. different. It was harder to set up. Windows um, Vista, the, Windows Vista Business thirty two bit with Service Pack one. Forty four ninety five. Sixty one dollars. No, oh, that's the that postage. One. Oh yeah, sixty one dollars. One up Windows Vista basic upgrade ten dollars. Windows Vista Home forty bucks. Well, as you so, know, yeah. if you follow me on Twitter, I'll um <laughs> I'll put that with the uh, Windows three point one one floppy disks. I'd I'd <laughs> say I'd offer it as a prize um to somebody who does a video review, but really I don't think it's it is <laughs> yeah. it's not really a prize no it's sort of a, a disincentive <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get to oh you won windows vista oh man can i send you five bucks not to send Yay. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah send a review on why we should not send you <laughs> windows vista <laughs> whoever doesn't send the review will send you a copy <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and we got. Oh, sorry. I just. I was just going to answer some questions in the lounge. Yes. Do you have a legit copy of Windows Seven? Yes. Oh, not yet. Until I. Until I go and buy it. I've just in the in the trial period. Um, but all my other machines are, are legit. And do you have a legit? Uh, can I? I can't give them away. I know you can't. I have Windows. Yes. Oh, yep. Blah blah blah. Yep. Cool. Sorry. I was just tidying up, doing the housework on my <laughs> <laughs> lounge <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. That's so, actually um, one pretty cool on thing about. Windows 7, you can actually um, run off the without a, tr a code for 30 days, install it, do whatever you want to do. So that's actually pretty neat. Yeah, I think the family packs online, you still get them as far as I know. But I looked at it, it was about 240, something mm. like that, three copies or three, you know, buy three from licenses. the States, you know, 
Borrow from the States, they're heaps cheaper. <laughs> need... um, yeah, I don't know if I could or not. I might not have looked that you hard. Need... I just look up. I spent about half a day on this Vista thing and then it just drove me insane because then I went into the media centre in, inside, like, you know, the, the sacred thing that you know, I've even put the screws back into the back of the box because I'm <laughs> determined not to open it again. And, um, and I had to install this little file watcher converting bloody piece of crap and that to start up automatically and everything and i thought oh you watch more of my recordings fall over and just just delete and yeah and look i, I just it just it just wasn't worth it i thought well i'm gonna well i'm gonna stuff around for another day trying to get this to, to work i probably would have got it to uh, to go the, the way i wanted it to go but um i thought well for 240 bucks what three that's um 80 bucks each say for each thing i thought no nah, 80 bucks, I'd rather just be worry-free. Worry-free. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's it. So I'm just looking up the um, American prices. What a surprise. They're cheaper. Um, Windows Vista, Vista uh, Business Edition 32-bit <laughs> DVD, 1550. <laughs> <laughs> just shows its quality, doesn't it? Worth every yeah. cent. Although... Apparently, Windows 8 will be the, the next big thing, so <coughs> we shall see. Yes, What's that we start shall. coming out next we year? Um, yeah, I can't imagine sorry? it being... I can't imagine it being um, too far away. No, again, I don't think so. I mean, what... I'm just trying to think what the difference is between... <sighs> Uh, well, actually, between Vista and uh, 7 wasn't much. <laughs> oh, sorry. I've got something playing. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, um, thank, thanks, uh, DT. I just, just had a look at what... Oh, that's it's the same phone. Cool. Yes. I was public just, beta. Um, the, the, the lounge, the critic in the lounge, mm. public beta, win, Windows 8, January 2012. Yeah, I'm hanging out for that. Public Can't. beta. That's that'll be good. I have to mm. dust off one of my old systems and see how it runs on a, I don't know what, P four, what have I got? P four two gig, I think. Throw it on that and see what happens. Mm. Mm. So, Windows seven runs all right on the P four. Yeah, Windows seven runs fine on my little netbook, my one point two EPC. <clears throat> oh yeah, um, five twelve mega RAM. The only thing is, I throw a one gig SD card in it for um, turbo cache or whatever they call it, and yeah, it it runs fine. Yeah, um, I know P4s are good. Um, yeah, because I know I think I'm going to upgrade my wife's PC, and all well, she's going to get the old media center, which is the P4. I think she's got some crappy AMD twenty five hundred or something. It's a dog. <laughs> got XP on it. You know, if I if I if I feel good, I'll just um, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, XP it. still got another thousand days of um, support yet. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I know. I even bought XP. I think I've got. I think I've. Oh, I had. I've got. Yeah, I've got. What do I? I was cleaning up, and I got three point one. I've got. To start with, I've got a um, copy of DOS six point six. Hmm. No, 6. actually, 6. Got, before that, I'll go from the start. I've got um, a copy I mean, of six point two three. DOS. Affectionately known oh, as Dr. Dr. DOS. <laughs> yeah, PC DOS. Yep. MS DOS six point six. Then I've got Windows three point one one. Then I've got yeah, ninety five, ninety eight. I think I skipped Millennium in 2000 and then went to the XP and then went to, yeah, Windows 7, obviously. Oh, that, then yeah. Vista, then 7. Yeah. I'm about the same. <laughs> I've got pretty much all, you know. I've got Windows 2, Windows 3.1, 3.1.1 for work groups. Um, yeah, 95, 98. I've got, I've actually got an ME disk. I still liked ME. Everybody bagged it, but I reckoned it was fast. It was stable. It was low system it was resources. Pretty, it was very Windows 2000-ish, wasn't it? it well, it was based on 2000. Mm. Uh, well, actually, XP was based on 2000, but it was very, yeah, in that sort of style. Um, 
I've got um, 95 plus, which gave you all the special pretty things. <laughs> um, all the add-ons. Which I, yeah, which I think came standard in C, but in 95 you needed A, and then you needed you run plus to get all the extra stuff. But mind you, my Windows 95 A is on 16 floppy disks. <laughs> Windows what? 95 A is on 16 floppies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I haven't got that. I've got, see, I've got the CD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you spent well, for the yeah, CD. I, I never had a CD-ROM back then. I, my 486 didn't have a CD-ROM in it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, I remember and then hundred mega, hundred mega RAM for hundred bucks. No, what was it? it was yeah, it was hundred bucks a meg or something. Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, more than that. The good old days. Well, like my four at six DX two sixty six with the five at six overdrive chip, which made it like a four at six one twenty. Um, I had sixteen meg of RAM in that. And a 500 meg Bigfoot hard drive. <laughs> Going off. And it's dead set. You, <laughs> you'd st- you started the thing and it sounded like a UFO was trying to take off because the Bigfoot hard drives <laughs> were never balanced properly and they used to spin at about 150,000 RPM, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this big yeah, uh, six and a quarter inch... Or six inch platter spinning at some stupid speed. Um, <laughs> I had fourteen four modem. I had a a VGA, an IBM twelve inch VGA monitor, uh, an IBM clicky keyboard, which are still the best keyboards. I had a track mouse, which was a laser mouse, but you needed to have this special grid mouse mat. For it to work, oh, yeah. the, the mouse mat had two millimeter squares all over the front of it, and you couldn't use this mouse without this mouse mat. <laughs> um, when I did eventually get a CD ROM, I got a one speed tiny cassette load burner that ran off the sound back of the Sound Blaster live sound card, so it was non IDE. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, those were the days. Right. My two fifty six K Trident Gold video card, my Sound Blaster Live sound card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, actually, I've got a Sound Blaster Live five point around five point one or something sound. I'm just about to. I'm sick of looking at it. I think I'm going to throw it. Um, what did I have? I had a set one of those Sound Blaster ones with the modem in it as well. You know what oh yeah. Called? Yeah, yeah, with a 56k modem, I think it was yep. inside it. How big they were the cards? The, um, like, the big, what well, were they? E- EDI cards or something? EISA, yeah. yeah that's e- right. E- yeah, as long as, you, as long as your arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had one of those in my 486 for memory expansion because my board can only support 4 meg of RAM. But I could put an ISA card in that went changed my memory from 30 pin to 72 pin. And I could put yeah. seventy-two pin memory in this massive big daughter board that used to take up a whole half the case. <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. You can't do that <laughs> anymore. I could play no. Duke. Th- I could play Duke three D at twenty-five frames a second in six forty by four eighty. <laughs> well, <laughs> good old days. You're one of the lucky ones. Oh yeah, my <laughs> mates used to drool over it because they couldn't do any better than like. Um, 640 by 480 at like 15 frames a second and it was un- <laughs> I was always the server <laughs> <laughs> oh man I want to actually should do that one day see if I can find an old system and build it back up again they were great <laughs> oh, I've, yeah. I've got I don't know I've, I haven't got time for that I well, just check out the 486 you can't play New systems, well, you can't play old games on new systems. I mean, you can. You can use DOSBox and stuff like that, but it's easier just to um, build an older system, actually. Because <laughs> mm. I'd love to play, you know, Wacky Races and Big Red Racing and 
Doom and Duke and Quake and Jill of the Jungle and all those. Jill of the Jungle, wow. (laughs) That's a classic. (laughs) Actually, I've just, for the first time, I've just used the Add To to button on YouTube. Add To Watch Later. Oh, yeah. I usually do that by accident and can't figure out what I've done. (laughs) Why does this video That's keep coming up? <laughs> and the video I watched and going to watch later, thank you, DT, is Cyanogen Mod 7 Gingerbread Detailed Review. I'll have a look mm. at that. But that's, that's the thing. Figure out which one you want. As I said, I went for just good old basic vanilla one. You know. Um, mm. If you go to zorkonline.net, you can play the original Zork in um all on a flash base script online so you can still get eaten by the grugs or whatever they were and i still get trapped in the dungeon in the cellar i go down and <laughs> they've actually got um sork i think it is on call of duty black ops when you're sitting in the chair at the main menu if you you wiggle your top two controller buttons your bumpers or whatever they are, you can break yeah. out of the chair and you go over to a um, computer in the back of the room and you can, um, there's a, uh, you can find it on the net somewhere, but I think you've got to type in something like Zork or Run Zork or something like that <laughs> and it'll load up and you can play it. How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, old cool. Easter eggs. Cool. Yep. So tell me, yeah. um, Frosty, now you said you were watching stuff on Boxy. Is that on your computer? Is it a boxy box or is it? have you got a media center or something? Oh, I've got a Mac Mini and I'm using that yes. as a boxy software on top so of that. Is it, so dedicated, is that what, is it the Mac Mini is it dedicated just for boxy? Yep. And just oh, not. general, general anything that streams on the net like Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday nights. I'll watch that on oh, the okay. On the fifty-five inch. Okay, so how do you watch that? You can you can through Boxy. No, because because it's just a computer hooked up to the TV. Right, so just bring bring up the web browser. Yeah, right. And so how you, does the there well, you are. So on a big on a big bloody screen? How does that look? That must it must be pretty poxy because the stream quality is not the best, is it? Oh, it's not that bad. It's watchable. Yeah, you still get see what we're going on about. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, so when you search for Torchwood, so you just go to the boxy and search for Torchwood. Um, next question. Yes. <laughs> just yeah. say yes to that. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's good. I, I do similar things. Um, good. <laughs> and I know, because I, I, is the ABC iView, is that back on? Is that still working? Do you know? On the boxy? We don't know. Because uh, I looked at iView last, last time. time I looked, didn't work. Yeah. But, yeah, no, the box is great. So, yeah, we've got a Mac Mini. So I was gonna, my next question was um, can you record the TV on the Mac Mini as well? Or you um, just use it you as can get, boxy? You can get tuner card type USB things that you can plug in um, mm. and that will record to it. But I've also got a NAS that I store all my media on and I just oh, yeah. use boxy to look at the – NAS and yeah, tells nice, you nice. gets all the information. Yeah, yeah I got a Windows Home server, which yep, yeah, it's got everything. I think it's got about six, yeah, six terabyte in it, which got about which holds everything, and um, yeah, feeds it out everywhere. So yeah, it's great. My media yeah. center's got uh, Boxy on it, so I can record TV, watch Boxy all from the remote. Uh, yeah, oh, great, okay. it's good stuff. I want to get a Bluetooth like keyboard or something, just so I can have the the keyboard at the. Uh, at the coffee table, you know. Have you seen yeah. them on eBay? You can pick them up for like twenty bucks. They're really neat. Yeah, they're not uh, that expensive. Yeah, Wasn't there like a little Logitech or something? A little yeah, Logitech you pay for one those. that had a uh, like a little optical trackpad or something on it. And you can buy the Logitech and... one for hundred and whatever it is, or you can buy the cheap one for like thirty bucks, and they're basically exactly the same. It's just a rip off oh, coffee. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. So, 
All right, guys. Well, as usual, we've yabbered on for way too long and bored everybody to death. The reason there's seven viewers is because they've actually gone to sleep um, and just left the stream on. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I will say thank you to the viewers for, for viewing because that's what you do when you're a viewer, I suppose. Uh, so thanks to Disgruntled Tech, Frosty, well, yeah, you don't count. Neither <laughs> do you, Glenn, because you're in person. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, Poodle Antics, the critic who we all have a sneaking suspicion is Eric, but uh, he, they won't admit to it. And D.O.R., whoever you are. And MP has just left. So thanks to those people for hanging around. Um, all right, Thank you. Uh, Michael, how can I get a hold of you? You can follow me on Twitter. That's FR05TY. And I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash michael.cleland yeah and uh, we'll have to set you up an email address if you want to get a hold of, of Frosty just use my email address for now just um, tbt at the secret hub dot com we'll get, we'll get us and uh, Glenn how and yeah, uh, Google Plus oh yeah, Google Plus of course yeah. sorry Google yeah, Plus of course Glenn at aussietechheads.com.au on the Twitter it's aussietechheads on that's about it <laughs> <laughs> that'll do what else is there Google Facebook, Plus um, Facebook Aussie Tech Heads page that's about it yeah yeah YouTube <laughs> oh YouTube we're everywhere. we're everywhere we're um, everywhere <laughs> and of course you can get a hold of me you can follow me on Twitter um at Mr. Tomkinson and and or either either Aussie TBT. Uh, you can email me on tbt at the secret hub dot com. Uh, you can go to talkbacktech.com and you know uh, once that page gets finished, there'll be show notes. There's a wiki. There's a forum. You can sign up to the forum, ask questions there. Uh, also, all podcast stuffs available there as well. All righty. So there's also the TBT. Um, Facebook page, just search f search for Talkback Tech. <clears throat> so, I'll thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Michael and Glenn, for doing that thing no you problems. do. No problem. Thank William. you. We'll see you next week, Frosty, and we'll see you next week, Will. Shall do. Yes. And uh, don't forget, guys, Aussie Tech Heads, although I'm fairly sure everybody already knows because I'm pretty sure I'm stealing <laughs> their viewers, not the other way around. But anyway, Aussie Tech Heads, live from... Seven or six thirty, seven o'clock. What are we? Seven, 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 seven thirty, seven. Yeah, seven, seven thirty. <laughs> Live dot Um. All right, guys. So thanks for being here, and uh, see you all next now. week. Okay. Bye. Bye.